Hi everyone, this is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's just after 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday, October 7th, coming on this morning to talk about a rapidly intensifying Hurricane Milton located over the southern Gulf of Mexico this morning has intensified at an extreme rate in the last few hours. Now a powerful Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds up now about 155 miles per hour. Uh, the system is centered right now uh, just about 130 miles to the west-northwest of Progreso on the north coast of the Yucatan Peninsula and and about 720 miles to the southwest of Tampa. Uh, this powerful hurricane is going to move uh, eastward, east-southeastward at about nine miles per hour right now, and then turn more eastward over the next 12 to 24 hours, bringing the core of Milton very close to the northern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, where we have a hurricane warning in effect, the potential for dangerous, life-threatening storm surge in that area as well. Beyond that time, we expect Milton to turn more towards the northeast and east-northeast, and uh, as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday, and then make landfall along the west coast of the Florida Peninsula as a powerful hurricane uh, late Wednesday or Wednesday evening and then move across the state out into the western Atlantic again as a hurricane uh, by early Thursday morning. So we have multiple life-threatening hazards that are uh, going to play out in Florida and much of the Florida Peninsula over the next several days, really beginning late Tuesday night into Wednesday. Uh, let's take a look first at the storm surge risk. Uh, there is extreme uh, high level of storm surge risk along much of the west coast of Florida. We have a storm surge watch in effect from Suwannee River all the way down through the Tampa Bay area, through Sarasota, Port Charlotte, Fort Myers, Naples, all the way down to uh, Chocol uh, to uh, 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 excuse me to uh, Flamingo, where everywhere in this area is at the has the risk of life-threatening storm surge inundation over the next 48 hours. Particularly concerned about this area you see in red from Yankee Town down to Bonita Beach, where we're expecting greater than five feet of inundation. And in the middle here between Anclote River and Inglewood, including the Tampa Bay region, we're expecting eight to 12 feet of storm surge inundation above ground level somewhere in that area. And that's life-threatening inundation. So let's think about what does eight to 12 feet of storm surge look like? So, you know, I'm six feet tall. So when you get to six feet, that's water above my head. We're talking potentially water twice that high. And that's storm surge that can flood cars, homes, roadways, escape routes, but the potential for damaging and destructive wave action on top of that storm surge that can result in destruction to homes and properties and really make it not a safe environment to be in. So many folks are under evacuation orders along the west coast of Florida. Know what zone you live in and where your home is. Evacuation zones in Florida are lettered from A all the way to F. So go to floridadisaster.org slash K-N-O-W to find out if you live in a storm surge evacuation zone. If you've been asked to leave by your local officials, please do so as soon as you can and get to a safe place. Remember, you don't have to drive hundreds of miles to get out of the storm surge zone. Often you only have to drive tens of miles to get to a shelter, a safe place to stay with a friend or relative to ride out the storm. Now, in terms of timing, you have all day today and pretty much all day Tuesday to get out and get to a safe location. You'll want to be in a safe place, certainly by the time of a nightfall tomorrow night. Now on the wind front, again, we're expecting Milton to be a major hurricane as it moves northeastward across the Gulf of Mexico. While we could see the peak winds come down a little bit, the storm is expected to grow in size as it nears landfall along the Florida West Coast on Wednesday. We have a hurricane watch in effect for the Florida West Coast from Chokoloski all the way up to Suwannee River, including the Tampa Bay region. And it also now extends inland, including places like Ocala, Orlando, uh, the uh, west of Lake Okeechobee, uh, the inland portions of uh, Polk County, Lakeland, up to the Cedar Key area. So everyone in this area is at risk of seeing damaging hurricane force winds uh, during the, uh, the, the Wednesday into Wednesday night. We're likely to see these hurricane watches extended eastward over to the east coast of Florida later today. Now, in terms of the timing of when are those tropical storm force winds first going to arrive, it looks like along the west coast of Florida within those hurricane and storm surge watch areas during the early morning hours on Wednesday with a substantial risk of wind damage uh, through the portions of the interior portions of the Florida Peninsula near the track of the center of Milton. Now, let's move on to the rainfall threat. Uh, Milton's going to be moving relatively quickly, but we're still going to see uh, the potential for some very heavy rainfall, widespread rainfall totals of 5 to 10 inches, isolated totals as high as 15 inches, especially near and to the north of the track, uh, along the I-4 corridor, northwards up towards the uh, Jacksonville, St. Augustine, Palm Coast area. And that's the area that we've highlighted with the greatest risk for flash flooding. Uh, there could be considerable flash and urban flooding, moderate to major river flooding in this area from Wednesday all the way 
into Thursday morning. Now remember, flash, freshwater flooding has historically been the biggest killer in tropical storms and hurricanes in the United States over the last 10 years. So let's talk a little bit more about preparedness. Remember, you've got today and much of tomorrow along the west coast of Florida and in the rest of the Florida Peninsula to get ready for Milton. Again, this may be time for you to protect your home, put up your shutters, cover your windows, secure your doors and loose items outside. Determine what your sheltering options are. If you need to leave your home, maybe you live in a mobile home, or if you live in a storm surge evacuation zone, know where you're gonna go to get to a safe place. Think about if you have any special needs with you or anyone in your family. If you have pets, how are you gonna take care of everything that's important to you? Make sure you have your supplies ready if you're evacuating. Make sure you have food, water, any medicine, any medical devices. Uh, you charge up your phone. Make sure you fill up or charge your vehicle so that you are be able to be mobile. Uh, finally, help your neighbors, especially those that are vulnerable or elderly, and uh, and make help them to be uh, to get ready for the storm as well. And then finally, again, follow those evacuation orders if given. If nothing else, you do not want to be left in a devastated environment after a storm like Milton, where there could be no services, very limited, very dangerous area to be in after the storm is over. So let's just finally touch on the key points here for Hurricane Milton. In the short term, we're expecting damaging hurricane force winds and life-threatening storm surge along the north coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in the next 12 to 24 hours. And we're seeing that increasing risk of both life-threatening storm surge and damaging hurricane force winds for portions of the west coast of the Florida Peninsula beginning as early as Tuesday night or early Wednesday. We're seeing those storm surge watches in effect, hurricane watches in effect for not just the west coast, but much of the Florida Peninsula now. And again, please follow any evacuation orders you're given by your local officials. And then there will be that threat of heavy rainfall uh, and considerable flooding risk with Milton. So please come back to us at the Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov throughout the day and throughout the event. You can get more information on your local impacts from your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov. And we'll be back with you later today with more on Milton. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.